Well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this new Rock in Action webinar. Uh, I'm I am sharing my screen. I believe you are seeing it. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. And today uh, we will we'll be discussing the finished and polishing topic. Uh, my name is Alan, and I work in the Rock support team. Okay. Uh, let's start with what is surf surface finish and polish. Uh, well, sur surface finish is a broad range of industrial process that uh, alter the surface of a manufactory item to achieve a certain property. Um, well, in this process, the metal surface is altered by adding, removing, or reshaping. Um, and polishing generally refers to the final step to get, for example, a smooth, a scratch-free surface with uh, an ideal aesthetics. Um, generally, uh, this process involves using an abrasive material uh, to finish a metal surface. Um, and uh, as we can see on, on the video, on the video here, um, a geometry is moving through a bed of particles, and as the geometry moves, it's occurring in an abrasive effect. Uh, we can have other types uh, of process as well. For example, uh, with the particles flow be pointed direct to the geometry, uh, no as shoot pinning, so uh, the geometry will receive all the impact of the particle flow. And another example, uh, it is the case with screws, uh, in which all the screws and nuts have been colliding uh, with each other to generate uh, a smooth surface, as we can see here on this video. Uh, so, uh, among the many benefits obtained from the surface finish, uh, surface finish process, we uh, can highlight some of them. For example, uh, remove burns and other surface flaws uh, can be used to improve corrosion or rust resistance, uh, control surface friction, remove rust from some equipment or, or parts, create surface tension to enhance uh, structural properties. Uh, and we could also mention others like uh, helping with the adhesion of a paint and other coatings, uh, increase resistance to chemical, uh, enhance aesthetics. All these items uh, refers uh, to controlling the surface, reducing the roughness and creating smooth, a smooth surface. And of course, there are several other applications. For example, some of them require um, a, a coating of a specific product to change the interface uh, interactions. And here, uh, Rock DEM can handle most of these problems. Uh, for example, uh, polish machines using uh, a, a bed of particles, as we saw uh, in the pre previous slides, uh, shot pinning, uh, pointing the particle flow to, to the geometry piece, uh, sand blasting, uh, great uh, grading machines, and all other similar uh, similar process. Um, okay, so the idea here is to show a demonstration of a user case. So in this case, uh, we will see a polishing uh, process, which consists of a piece, uh, a geometry piece inside of a bed of particles. And uh, this piece uh, will rotate and vibration, or uh, we will have a motion. Uh, and the particles around it uh, will generate an abrasive effect. So uh, on, on the next slides, uh, we will check how to build uh, this setup, uh, detail on the most important points, and then some uh, of the post-processing capabilities uh, that Rock DEM uh, allow us uh, to make. Uh, well, here uh, we will see the uh, how to build this setup. So 
uh, first of all, let's define the physics of this problem. Uh, here, we need to adjust the gravity direction uh, in the z-axis. Okay. And the other models will be kept as the full. We will only activate the CGM factor. So the, our uh, coarse grain model. After that, uh, we, uh, we will need to import our geometry piece. So we can, for example, choose the imported unit. Okay, and then an important thing uh, on, uh, on, on this process indeed uh, is to check the triangle size of the geometry piece. This uh, it is very important because it will define the resolution of the geometry. Here uh, the geometry uh, part is very interesting for us uh, and if it is the case we can even change uh, this triangle size. To help our post-processing, uh, we, we, we will enable some modules uh, to collect a, uh, uh, an additional information. Uh, here, we will we use uh, statistics. Okay, and after that, uh, we will start to, to set up to create our uh, motion frame for the geometry piece. We can uh, rename the motion frame or name or change the name all right uh, and this motion frame can handle uh, can handle several motions so we can uh, set one or more uh, motions type here uh, first uh, we will define a, rot a rotation rotation motion so we will need to, to prescribe uh, an angular velocity. And of course, we, we can change the unit as well. Okay. And then uh, here we are using another motion. So we, we will add uh, vibration. So uh, it is a periodic translation which require the frequency and amplitude of the motion. And of course, we also need to specify the direction uh, of this motion. It is important to note, to note that uh, we need to select this motion inside the geometry. Uh, so uh, we have a motion linked to geometry. After set the motion, we can pre preview it so here is another important thing because uh, we can check if the motion uh, is uh, as expected. Uh, for example, here we are noting that the motion uh, don't have a good resolution. So uh, what uh, we can do? So uh, how can I change this behavior? Uh, we can reduce uh, the output frequency on the solver tab and now uh, we can have a smooth transition uh, for the motion. Okay, we are on the motion preview. We need to back to the 3D view. Okay, uh, and then we need to create uh, our particle. Here uh, we are using uh, a sphere shape, so uh, we we only need to define the particle size, and and then uh, your CGM factor, scale factor. Uh, the other configurations will be kept as default. Uh, and another important thing here is uh, to collect contact information. The, this is important because uh, we we need this information to to do some post processing. After that, uh, we need to define uh, the input type, so uh, how the particles will be uh, injected in our simulation. So uh, we need to uh, to select our particle, 
and then uh, the amount of mass that we are using. Okay, and some other configurations about some restrictions uh, on the on the volume field. Okay, so uh, now at the end uh, we need to set the solver configuration so we can define the, the resource that we we use in the simulation and the simulation duration. Basically, uh, this is the uh, important point on the on the setup. Uh, with this, we can uh, start our simulation. Okay, and here we will we will see uh, some of the post processing capabilities of the Rock DM. So here we have uh, all uh, the simulation is done already, and uh, at the first. Uh, we can check the geometry piece, and for that we can uh, we can see the shear work on the on the geometry. But uh, for doing that, we need to create a custom property. Uh, so this custom property uh, would be the triangle area times uh, shear and times the output frequency. So with these expressions, we can we can calculate that. But uh, we need uh, to an, another one because uh, we want to accumulate this value along the simulation. So uh, we can do that using uh, these expressions. Okay. And now uh, we can plot this new property on the 3D view and of course uh, visualize the result of shear. Uh, we can even change the limits of the property uh, to get a better visualization. Okay. And of course we also have a lot of flexibility uh, about the color scale. We can change the color scale and the, the color that we are showing. Uh, an important thing uh, is to go to the last output to see the cumulative values and uh, we can update uh, the limits again to better see the gradients uh, on the on the geometry piece to see the shear. Okay, now uh, let, uh, we can analyze the particles as well. Uh, here we are seeing the entire uh, particles, but let's create a plane uh, to reduce uh, the particles that have been shown on the 3D view. With this, we can uh, we can check our geometry piece uh, in the middle. So we can color in the the particles. Here we are coloring by velocity. Uh, so. Uh, it is possible to note that uh, the highest velocity is next to our ge uh, our geometry piece because uh, it is where the motion was set. Okay. And then we can use other process as well. Let's create here uh, a cylinder process and this uh, will be used together uh, with a, a tag, tagging calculation. Uh, the idea here is to mark some particles of, uh, of the domain. Okay. And create a tagging uh, from the cylinder. Okay, uh, the tagging is used to map uh, where the particles are and how they evolve uh, from the initial initial position. So we can uh, we can see uh, where the particles are and where they were before. 
Okay, let's change the, the limits for the property. Okay. And we can analyze this along with the simulation to see uh, the behavior. Okay. Yes. And of course, there's other user process as well. Another one, uh, an interesting one, is the particle trajectory. So we can create uh, this, uh, this other uh, post processing. Okay, so with this process, uh, we can see, of course, the trajectory of the of the particles, and let's plot the, the traje trajectory before. Okay. Yes. Uh, here we can see uh, that the particles next to the geometry piece uh, have the highest, highest uh, displacement, as we checked with the velocity profile. It is a, a interest, in, interesting uh, post processing as well. And uh, the last analysis that uh, we could check here, uh, it is, uh, is referred to the internal polishing. So uh, depending of the geometry motion, in, in this case, uh, mainly be, uh, due to the vibration motion, uh, we can check or we can have particles inside uh, the piece. So uh, we can generate or we can see an abrasive effect inside uh, this piece. And basically that uh, it is the post processing that uh, we want to show on this on this webinar. So uh, getting back uh, to the presentation, the previous explanations has shown several cap capabilities of Rocket EM. Uh, we call analyze the problem in different aspects. Uh, for example, on the studied scenario, it was possible to identify regions where the surface treatment is being most effective, find the ideal operation conditions uh, for higher efficiency, uh, predict shear forces on the geometries, uh, see how uh, particles flow inside the equipment, uh, and use contact information to see the amount of interaction uh, between particles and the part under surface treatment. And of course, uh, these were only some uh, of the features. RockDEM can explore the simulation in several uh, different ways. Uh, so uh, this was uh, what we prepared to show uh, in this Rock in Action webinar. It is worth mentioning that we have more topics to detail along this year, and the next one uh, will be uh, Powder Dowsing in June. So stay tuned, guys. <laughs>